Amid the Ethiopian desert, sniper surgeant Bob Lee Swagger and his spotter, Corporal Dunny Fenn, are on a crucial mission. After targeting an enemy vehicle, they plan to evacuate, but unexpectedly, multiple enemy forces appear and attack. Using his exceptional sniper skills, Bob fights back fiercely. Despite their efforts when bombs begin to detonate nearby, they call for an emergency extraction. Still, their CIA team abandons them, cutting off communication. Tragically, Donnie is killed by helicopter gunfire. Bob retaliates and despite missing initially, he eventually hits the helicopter's propellers, causing it to crash. Three years later, Bob lives in the Wyoming mountains with his dog. One day, Colonel Isaac Johnson approaches him with a unique task, to devise a plan to assassinate the president. The actual intention is not to kill the president, but to prevent a predicted assassination attempt by understanding how it could be executed. Bob initially refuses, but Johnson leaves him the details, appealing to his sense of responsibility. After careful consideration and using his expertise to simulate the assassination scenario, Bob agrees to help. He meticulously surveys the locations of the president's upcoming speeches and determines that the assassination will likely occur in Philadelphia. When Bob informs Johnson of his findings, Johnson praises his work and persuades him to be the spotter during the event. Bob also meets Michael Sandel, a former soldier involved in the operation. On the event day, they set up in a room with a view of the venue, aided by a local policeman. As the president prepares to speak, following the Ethiopian archbishop, Bob senses the perfect timing for the assassination and urges them to prevent the president from going on stage. His warnings are ignored. In a shocking twist, the policeman shoots Bob, and simultaneously, the president is targeted by an unknown shooter. Despite being wounded twice, Bob manages to flee by jumping through a window and then through a building's glass roof. Meanwhile, Johnson's team clears the room, leaving only Bob's rifle as evidence. Bob, fleeing through the streets, encounters rookie FBI agent Nick Memphis. Easily overpowering Nick, Bob handcuffs him to a railing and takes his car keys, declaring his innocence. The city is soon flooded with FBI and police forces, including helicopters, searching for Bob. To momentarily elude them, he drives into a car wash, where he cuts open the back seat to retrieve a first aid kit from the trunk, using it to tend to his wounds. His escape continues on the streets, leading to a dead-end situation. With no other option, Bob reverses the car into a river. When the FBI finds the car, it's empty. Bob has cleverly escaped by hitching a ride on a boat. He then steals a truck on the other side of the river, which helps him pass unnoticed by patrols. Simultaneously, Bob's image is broadcast widely in the news. Nick's mishandling of the situation becomes a topic of discussion, and he's informed by his boss about an impending review for his actions, embarrassing the FBI. Nick recalls Bob's insistence on a setup. Still, his boss dismisses this and advises Nick to avoid foolish statements in his report. As night falls, Bob strategically cuts the power to a grocery store to remain unrecognized while he gathers supplies. He also breaks into a mechanic shop for tools and to use the facilities. Using his acquired items, Bob constructs an improvised IV, injecting it into his arm for treatment. Back to Nick, now assigned to menial phone duty, he receives a tip from a grocery store clerk who suspects the earlier visitor was Bob. Nick recognizes the purchased items as components for old-fashioned wound treatment, but his boss doesn't take his report seriously. Yet, Nick persists in his investigation, working tirelessly through the night in his office. The following day, his colleague Alice Galindo finds him and shares news of the murder of the cop who shot Bob, further supporting Nick's suspicions. Disguised as a mechanic, Bob drives for hours, reaching Kentucky to meet Sarah Fenn, the widow of his late colleague Donnie. They hadn't spoken since Donnie's passing, though Bob had maintained a connection through letters and annual flowers. Having seen the news, Sarah is cautious but eventually allows Bob inside after he convinces her of his innocence. She informs him that the actual shooting victim was the Ethiopian Archbishop, not the President. Bob then provides Sarah with supplies, including whipped cream cans. He uses the nitrous oxide from the cans to sedate himself while Sarah stitches his wounds. In the meantime, Nick visits multiple buildings surrounding the area of the incident and finds tripod marks on the floor of an old bell tower. He then goes to a cafe to chat with some weapons experts online, who quickly tell him about the remote-controlled rifles that could have been used in such a situation. When Bob wakes up, he is determined to clear his name, and he thinks Nick is the best way to do that, so he plans to meet him. Sarah agrees to help him and even gives him Donnie's old hunting rifle. Their plan is simple. Sarah puts on a disguise and approaches Nick to give him Bob's car ID information at a cafe. That way, when Nick investigates the information on the system, it'll get Johnson's attention. Sarah executes the plan perfectly, but Bob, who has been watching from afar, is found by the police, who ask for an ID. For a trained soldier like him, 
it isn't hard to fight them and even use their dog against them, so Bob gets to knock them out and manages to steal a radio before running away. As Bob anticipated, Nick tries to look up the car information in the system. However, he discovers that the information is classified at a higher security level than he can access. He asks a lawyer for help, and after some hesitation, she tells him which case has such clearance. She confirms that the newscasts got tapes of the incident that were heavily edited. The other part of Bob's prediction also comes true. Johnson's men notice all of Nick snooping around, so of course, they'll take care of it. Nick is kidnapped and beaten up for information, but since he won't talk, the thugs put up a gadget on him and make it look like Nick is going to kill himself. Fortunately, Nick is saved at the last second by Bob, who kills all the thugs from afar with his sniper before coming inside. Nick offers his help to do this legally since he can prove Bob didn't shoot the Archbishop. Still, Bob only wants revenge, and the law can't give him that. It may clear his name, but the corrupted names will still be in power and do the same thing repeatedly. Since Nick has already done enough to lose his job, he accepts to help. Johnson's men find out Bob has sent flowers to Sarah every year and sent someone to kidnap her so they can use her as bait. Meanwhile, Nick and Bob drive to Tennessee to meet Mr. Raitt, a firearms expert. Mr. Raitt tells them about paper patching, which makes it possible for a bullet to be fired from one rifle but made to look like it came from another. This is precisely how Johnson 